So the next example we want to look at, or a topic if you like, um, is geometric series. So the geometric series is a special type of series where we actually can understand pretty much everything there is to know about the geometric series. Um, it's also an important series because it comes up quite a bit when, once we move on. Right? Later on we're going to look at power series, Taylor series. Right? We're going to have, so power series is sort of a natural extension you know, from polynomials to things where you know, we're still working in powers of x, but we don't have a highest power of x, right? We just keep going on forever, adding more and more terms. In which case, well, you know, you're going to have like an x to the n in there. And you want to understand what's going on, right? You want, you're going to be seeing series that look like that, OK? Um, some people will put a constant in there, like an a, a times r to the n, and call that a geometric series. But you can always factor out the constant, bring it out front. Um, even for an infinite series, that works. So we'll just concentrate on this, and if we want to put a constant in, we can always multiply by a constant. All right. So what can we say about a geometric series? Well, uh, one, notice that, notice that we start at 0, not at 1. Okay. So if we were writing out the terms in the sequence that we're using here, right? the terms in the sequence are 1, r, r squared, r cubed, and so on. We add. We add by r every time, so we can think of those as maybe like the a n's. And then the s n, right, the partial sums that we're adding up, those are going to be 1, 1 plus r, 1 plus r plus r squared, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed, and so on. Okay. Now, uh, what's cool is we can actually come up with a nice closed form formula for those partial sums. Okay? So we have the following. So if we look at Sn, so Sn would be 1 plus r plus r squared okay? up to r to the n. All right? Um, now, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do r times Sn. Multiply everything by r. So then I have r plus r squared, and r cubed, and so on, up to r to the n, and then n plus 1. Now I've shifted it over 1, um, because what I want to do is I want to subtract these. Subtract. So on this side, if I subtract, I'm going to have 1 minus r times Sn, right? 1Sn minus Rsn gives me 1 over R if I factor out the Sn. And on the other side, I have 1, R minus R, R squared minus R squared, Rn, right? All of these terms cancel. We're just left with that last one, R to the N plus 1, OK? So that means that my partial sums look like this, 1, minus r to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus r. Okay, And notice that the dependence on n is entirely here in this exponent. Okay. So now we ask ourselves, well, what happens? Um, what happens if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of r to r to the n, or n plus 1 if you like. Okay. Well, there are three possibilities. Um, and I guess, you know, just to keep things, uh, let's keep things simple for now. Um, no, we'll just say, let r be a real number. Um, if the absolute value of r is less than 1, okay, then this limit will be 0. Okay? Because if you take a number that's less than 1 in absolute value and you raise it to a higher power, it gets larger and larger and larger, um, and you get 0 in the limit. Okay? Um, it's equal to 1 if r is equal to 1, 
Um, it's undefined if r is equal to minus 1, because it's just going to flop back and forth between 1 minus 1. Um, and it's going to be infinite if the absolute value of r is bigger than 1. Okay. All right. So these, these are not too hard to work out. You can convince yourself that these are true. And so then we look at this and we say, OK, well, what can we say then about this sequence of partial sums? Well, um, minus 1, actually, we saw that in the last video, right? We saw that as an example. Um, minus 1 to the n, that series diverges, right? We don't get anything there. So that one diverges. Uh, 1 to the n also diverges, right? Because um, the one, I guess, case that we left out here is this is all well and good if r is not equal to 1, right? Um, but if r is equal to 1, then Sn is just n, right? Because you're just going to be doing 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, right? Um, so you get n. And the limit of n as n goes to infinity is certainly infinite, okay? And so we look at this and we say, well, you know what? The, the only time where you can actually take a limit of this is going to be if absolute value of r is less than 1. So what we can say is that this geometric series, n going from 0 to infinity, r to the n, um, it converges if the absolute value of r is less than 1. And in that case, we get an answer, 1 over 1 minus r for that sum, right? Because this part is going to go to 0. Okay. And it diverges otherwise. So this is an interesting example because not only can we say exactly when it converges, we can say what it converges to. That's not always going to be the case.